Michael, here's the question. Okay. Uh, and I sure hope everybody has watched those first four segments because they were riveting. You've got a year to fix the economy. What are you going to do? Can't fix it in a year, Stan. But you can come. You can do some things that would really help. And I think what you have to do is say. The one thing that we have to provide is employment, but government jobs aren't the answer, which means we've got to find a way to spur actual investment and production in the United States that's either can be export here or sold here. Well, traditionally, that's been housing and cars. Right. Housing, the housing is, is, a, is a huge problem because of the overhang. Um, I think for the first time, we actually might consider, and people will, will maybe not like this, but I, I really honestly believe we, no, we need to look at either quotas or some sort of tariffs to protect certain industries so we get them up and running again. Such as? Um, aerospace might be a good place to start, so we make sure that Boeing doesn't export those jobs overseas for a while until the U.S. economy is healthy again. Um, not that we don't want to have trading partners that are fair, and we don't want fair trade, but right now we're not getting any fair trade in the world. And it's really showing up in our, in our ability to have jobs here that pay a decent wage. So we've got to do something that spurs that. The housing is a different issue. Uh, the housing problem was created with years of, of uh, problems and years of bad financing and years of bad decision and then a blow-off era where prices went way too high. Mm -hmm. The answer is you have to liquidate that industry. That inventory has to be liquidated before you can have recovery. So the answer is pain in the near term, get the government out of the way, let the market deal with this, and let it liquidate out. And that means we're going to lose some banks, we're going to lose some mortgage companies, we're going to lose some investors who hold those mortgages. Those have to be liquidated out. Otherwise, we can't recover. And we, once, once that inventory is done, we can fairly price housing, and then you can get a bump up again where you actually get starts growing again. Okay, Michael, you're way over my head right now. So um, I want to. when you say we, we have to liquidate inventory, that means that all of these quote-unquote bad loans out there or quote-unquote foreclosures that are out there. Those we, have to be, they have to be written down and written off. So that that so, inventory doesn't hang over the market anymore. Now, isn't much of that on the back of, uh, of uh, federally backed securities right yeah, now? Exactly. The federal government has to quit supporting the price structure. It has to be allowed to reach the level where incomes are. Otherwise, you'll never solve the problem. If you keep financing bad debt, all you do is artificially inflate the price that is unaffordable. So a house that should that sells for $100,000 today might find a buyer at 75000 but it can't get down to 75000 because the Fed keeps coming in and propping up the price. And why? Because he doesn't want to damage the balance sheets of the banks who hold the paper. But, Michael, that's been the theory of the way... Uh, agriculture here in the United States has been able to uh, make its way with subsidies. and that, that has to end too. But global demand for feed grains in the next 20 years is going to be high enough they don't need subsidies anymore. In fact, if I were young, if I was a young man, I was going to start over again, I'd go find a farm and buy it because it's going to be a great business to be in. <laughs> All right, with that, we're going we're gonna to end our series of, of interviews with you, Michael. That's been Michael Young and his What He Would Do in a Year and maybe in a little bit more.